From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Now, the two words debt ceiling have been a part of our vocabulary these past few months. The face-off between the House of Representatives and the White House about how to pay bills the country's already incurred. What is it that doing to the markets? And should it be our biggest concern? You know, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. could default on its debts by June 1st. Gilbert Garcia knows all about the markets as the managing partner of Garcia Hamilton Associates. They've got over $22 billion in investments there, the largest bond manager in Texas, much more. By the way, he's now running for mayor. Yes, so. I am. Thank you. Okay, bro, thank you in, for that. In addition to all of that. In addition Jordan. to all that. Hey, full disclosure, Gilbert and I are good friends. We've been friends for a long time. We worked on several nonprofit mm -hmm. projects that raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's why we're good friends, because you know money. And, well, and we work well together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So let's talk about this debt ceiling. Yes, How much should we be worried about this con this, yeah. this problem that's happening right now? I'm going to take one step back, because I want to put it in context. Mm -hmm. uh, there are only two countries in the world that have this sort of debt ceiling issue. One is Denmark. Their ceiling is so much higher, it never comes to this angst. And the other is the United States. And it seems like every time we come to a point, there's this big crescendo in drama. We've been here before. The reality is we should just eliminate all this drama because it is not good for the country. It is not good for the world markets. It is not good for world economics because we are the gold standard. And if we were to default on our debt, it would be uh, certainly unknown, but it would be terrible for all the markets because we are the full faith and credit of the highest quality credit in the world. Mm -hmm. So the markets, are they already reacting to the potential impact? Well, the only thing I would say, the answer is not yet, and I'll tell you why. Um, first, when we went into this same type of drama during the Obama administration, we went through it twice during the Clinton administration, mm -hmm. you already had the equity market decline significantly. Here we are, equities are still up on the year a little bit, Bond prices are down on the year a little bit, so not quite. But what I do think the market is seeing is this uncertainty because we are having the biggest swings in yields in, you know, every single day in the history of the bond market. Mm -hmm. In other words, one day interest rates could be up 25 basis points, and then the next day, down 25 basis points. We've never seen that type of volatility. Is this all about, I've heard them say that this is simple as paying bills that we've already incurred. Is that the accurate statement? I mean, the, the debt ceiling stuff, the, the conversations about paying the bills the United States has already... Well, you can look at part of that, and let me sort of break down the pie. If you think about the budget, the budget right now is just under $7 trillion. And if you look, by the time you take out the things that you cannot cut for whatever reasons, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, interest on the debt, defense, the only discretionary spending part is about 25%. So as they talk about these big deficits and they talk about what are we gonna do, there's only a small sliver you can even work with mm -hmm. unless you put these other things on the table. And so if you look, there's another thing I wanna mention. Right now, the total debt ceiling is about 30 odd trillion. Well, that's essentially the size of the whole GDP of the country. So when you see countries in the world that have more debt than the size of their economy, that's always a precursor to very big problems. Mm. And that's where we are now. This challenge going forward, uh, okay, we're going to put you in Washington, D.C. You're going to solve it. What's your solution? Other than what you said, just forget, forget about the debt ceiling. Well, not, not so much forget about it. I think we need to come up with a solution that either pushes the debt ceiling much higher mm -hmm. So we don't come across this debt ceiling all the time or just eliminate all this yin and yang. At the end of the day, I would get the leaders uh, in one room and I wouldn't do these. We're going to have a meeting for an hour and then we know we'll reconvene next Friday. I would get them in a room and say we are not leaving mm -hmm. because the American people deserve uh, to get a budget out of here together. Is there any um, coincidence about the fact that this is happening in the Biden Democratic administration, Obama Democratic administration, Clinton administration. Well, it's less. Well, the answer is yes. It's 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 not a coincidence. But here's the thing: it's less about who's the president and more about a divided government, mm -hmm. uh, because you have a Republican House and a Democratic president. And the other thing is you have elections around the corner. And so you have some people whose interest is, let's get the economy going, let's get the economy going. And you have other people whose interest is, let's keep it soft so we can have a weak economy and then we can have a change in governmental initiatives. Okay, we talked earlier, you're running for mayor now. Uh, why did you decide to do that? First, I love this city. 
my wife and I have, and family have lived the American dream. We, uh, you know, have come here. We uh, have done everything. We have been uh, 40 seasons of youth soccer that I've coached. Uh, we've done everything in the church. The, you know, the auctioneer, I've been both the cult where I dress up in a horse outfit. We've done everything. And we've had some success in our lives recently with our firm. Our firm has grown. We're very proud of it because we own our firm. 38 employees, no outside shareholders, biggest bond firm in Texas. And what's beautiful, Cambro, is we are 75% of our team are women and almost 70% are black and Hispanic. Half the employees, half the team are really from the U of H system. Mm -hmm. We're homegrown, we're proof that it works. And so it is time for us to give back. And that is what we're doing. And what I have seen, and excuse me there, what I have seen is if you look at the city, um, it's just really got all kinds of challenges. And I just believe it's time for us to give back and step up. I really think it's a challenge of competency. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the city, I can tick off the issues. We've been fighting with the firefighters for seven years. It's totally unacceptable. And we're really the taxpayers are on both sides of the fight. We've had government intervention and essentially investigations on the housing department, the health department. We now have one of the biggest contracts in the city, which is our concession for the airport, now under severe controversy, and now there's litigation. And that has nothing to do already with public safety, potholes, and all those other things that are critical uh, to the citizens of Houston. It's really a question of competency, and it's time to get away from a uh, career politician and get someone with more of a business mindset that's going to do the right things and make the tough decisions for the city. You waited a long time to announce, and now you're going to have an official kickoff again coming up. When is that date? June the 5th. Okay. And the, and the reason is the markets have been that busy. And I, you know, uh, and, you know, I thrive on the markets. It's what I do for a living. Some people like uh, fantasy football. Some people play golf. I don't do either one. Uh, I like the markets. And it's been that busy. But I've been making my calls. I've been talking to friends. I've been encouraged to run. And so I'm looking to announce on June the 5th. Okay, so we're going to continue this conversation, Newsmakers Extra, because there's a lot of stuff I want to ask you about. Yes, sir. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for your financial tutelage. We needed that. I need it. I don't, just don't give a test. <laughs> no, no, good. Unless it's multiple choice. I, 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 I'm ready for you anytime. <laughs> okay. Gilbert Garcia, thank you so much.